Welcome back to another Photoshop tutorial. In this video, we're going to make a retro looking RGB split image that's got a little glitch to it. So the first thing we're going to do is the RGB split, which is actually very easy. So click on your layer here, your image, and go Control J to make a copy. Now name this, so double click on it and name this main and we're going to make that into a smart object. So when you're clicked on it, right click and go up to convert to smart object. The reason why we're going to do that is so we can mess with our image to make it kind of retro looking and stuff uh, within the smart object. And then we can keep adjusting it if we need to, and it'll impact all of our smart objects. So next we're going to go control J to duplicate that one and call this one red. And then we're going to duplicate again, control J and call this one cyan. And I'm gonna move this one up actually. And then all we're gonna do is on here, double click over to the right. And in our layer styles window, you're gonna see advanced blending and channels. On this red one, we're just gonna unclick the green and the blue, and you can see it makes this red over here. We just have red left and click okay. On the cyan one, you're gonna double click and we're going to get rid of red and leave the other two to make the cyan and click OK. So at this point, nothing really happened because they're all still lined up properly. So all you have to do is go on red and use your arrow keys. Make sure you're on your move tool up here. Use your arrow keys to move that one left to right. So I'm going to go left. I'm just clicking to move it a little bit left. And then I'm going to click on the other one on cyan and move it a little bit right. And you can see that now on this side, we have the cyan kind of showing up a little bit more on the side. And on the right side of everything, you're having a little bit of red show up. And obviously, the more you move it, like the more you click, the greater the effect is. Or right now, I'm holding it down. If you crunch it down, it lessens the effect. So you decide to what extreme you want the RGB split to happen. But let's just take a closer look over here to see what we've actually done. So I'm going to click the eyeball of these two and then this third one, the red one, and we can see that's what we see for the cyan one. And if I click back on red and get rid of cyan, that's what we see on the red one. But if we have both of them selected, uh, because we nudge them both over, you can see that there's this little bit on the edge of cyan and a little bit over here of red. And that's kind of why we need this main one still clicked in because we'll have both edges of that one to kind of fill in the little gaps. So at this point, if you don't want to give your image a retro look or mess with it in any other way, you're pretty much done because that's how you do the RGB split. But if you do want to mess with your image or to give it some sort of look, then keep watching. Once you're satisfied with the split, all we're going to do is double click on the actual thumbnail icon of your main layer on the smart object. So double click and it will create a whole nother document. This one's called main right here that'll be linked to this original one through the smart object. So whatever we do here will impact this over here once we save it. So on this one, we're just going to create the retro look of this, starting by going down here to image adjustments and clicking on color lookup. In there, right at the very top here, change this top one to futuristic bleak. By the way, these are all ones that just come with Photoshop. I haven't added any of my own just futuristic bleak here. And you can see it right away creates kind of a cool looking retro look right away. Next, we're actually going to click on our image and we're going to go control J to make a duplicate. Then we're going to go up to filter and filter gallery. In filter gallery, make sure you go into sketch and then click on halftone pattern, switch pattern type to line. So it might be on dot or something, switch it to line and just put contrast right down and size you can decide how big you want your lines i'm gonna go uh, i'm gonna go actually three i'm gonna have them a little bit bigger and click ok now right off the top this does not look good so we're gonna have to change a couple things go over to opacity first and i think somewhere around you know 30 percent looks okay and then change your blend mode over here to something that looks good for you so lighten kind of looks good um, I'm going to go with overlay and you can see there's just these if we zoom in a bit You can see that it's just these lines that were kind of created to give it a little bit of texture But speaking of texture, we're also going to add some grain So to do that make sure you're on this top layer the the copy layer that we just made and click this box with the plus in it to create a blank layer and then just go edit fill and change contents to 50% gray 
click OK. Then go up to Filter and select Camera Raw Filter. When the window opens up, just go over here and click on Effects and then slide the amount up quite a ways and you can see that some of that grain is being added right now and I like to crank this up and crank this up. So you can go to whatever extreme you want with these and click OK. But at this point you can see that it's still just this gray image with the grain on it. So we have to make it kind of transparent or blend it with our image. So to do that we're going to change our blend mode here from normal down to soft light and then just play with your opacity to see kind of to what level you want. So I'm going to go around just, you know, 90% and if we click off of it, you can see that's what it was before and then now that's with the grain added. Next, I'm going to add another adjustment layer. This time I'm going to go to curves and I'm going to create this kind of weird looking S. I think it uh, also makes a good look. So I'm going to put two dots here. I'm going to bring this one just down slightly and then in the corner here, I'm going to bring this one up and you can see it kind of washes that out a bit and then this one down. So it kind of mutes out the, the contrast of it a little bit. Then you really just have to decide if the saturation of your image is the way that you like. So I'm going to take a little bit away. So I'm going to click in adjustment layers again and go to hue. You know what? I'm going to pick vibrance and maybe I'm just going to punch up the vibrance just a bit, but I'm going to take down some of the saturation, just kind of mute it just a little bit more. Okay, so that's going to be my first go at the retro look for my image. And remember, it's all on my smart object file here. So if we go over back to the main one, we can see that this one hasn't been affected yet. Because on your smart object one, you have to go over here to file and save. And then I'm going to quickly click over here and you'll see this one. It'll update, see that little spinny, and then boom, it'll impact everything. You can see all three of these, all those smart objects, are all impacted by whatever we do over here. So you don't have to go and change them back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Okay, so if you don't like something, you can just go back here. So let's say you go, actually, you know what? I don't like the vibrance on that. So you get rid of it. Then you just have to go file, save again, and it'll automatically change all of these three as well, all these smart objects and adjust this file. So once you make sure that you have the look that you want over here, and you like how it looks back over here when it's split, then we just really have one more thing to do, which is to glitch your image a little bit, if you want. To do that, we have to go over to our red layer. I think the red layer looks the best. And we are going to go up to Layer and Rasterize Smart Object. That's going to take the Smart Object thing off of this one. That's why you got to wait till the end here to do it, because now if we change this one, it will only affect the cyan and main layer. It will not impact the red one because it's not a smart object anymore. Then all we're going to do is go into channels, select the red channel, and then go up to filter, distort, and go down to wave. So in here, I have kind of the settings the way that I want already. So generators around three, I think looks pretty good. Make sure this wavelength here, you can see it as you move it along here, it, it changes to, for what it looks like. It doesn't really matter, but it's kind of somewhere in the middle like this. Looks pretty good. Amplitude, keep it pretty low uh, for the minimum and maximum just a little bit more than that. And then scale, flip those around. So the vertical uh, distortion here, keep it right down. And then the horizontal one, you can have somewhere just below 10, I think looks pretty good. And then make sure type is on square and down here, click repeat edges, bleh, repeat edge pixels. And you can click randomize here to kind of change how those settings look in your image. So just click randomize until you get something that you think you like, it's hard to see, and then click okay. And you can see it, it kind of just breaks it apart just a little bit more. It just gives it that extra little like old looking feel to it. Now when we go back to layers over here and you click on cyan, it'll apply that just to the reds. It just kind of messes with it just a little bit. And then obviously you can glitch out the cyan layer if you want as well. I would select green as my channel and then I would just make sure my wave settings are slightly different than they were for the red channel so that the glitch isn't exactly a copy. And there you go. That's how you make a retro looking RGB split with a little bit of glitch in it. If you got something out of this video or you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and I'll catch you next time.